Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at an introduction to government intervention, pro-free market, interventionist, and then we'll be finishing off with a summary. So let's think about government intervention. We've talked about the role of government in previous videos, but in this video, we're going to flesh it out a little bit more. So governments intervene within a market to try and overcome the market failures that we observe. And this is known as government intervention. So government intervention is regulatory action taken by government that interferes with decisions made by individuals, groups and organizations about social and economic matters. So the government's role is to intervene in the market where they believe to be most appropriate. So an example is where governments may intervene in order to improve the allocation of resources. So one example is going to be healthcare, and they believe the provision of healthcare is experiencing a market failure, and therefore the regulatory input is going to be a change in the law which says that the general public receive free health care and as such with that law in place the government begins to set up a free to access public health care system. Now the aims of government intervention in markets will vary. Common goals are stabilizing prices, providing farmers with minimum income and discouraging merit goods. So an example of government intervention will be dealing with farmers within the agricultural industry and the agriculture industry is viewed to have some sort of weighted importance to the government. And so even the farmers within the agricultural industry aren't earning a wage high enough that would keep the farmers in this industry. The government is going to increase their wages for them by increasing increasing the minimum income that they receive and there's plenty of avenues in which we can imagine that can happen. So we are going to explore the pros and cons of government intervention by looking at how pro-free markets and interventionist economists think. So this is a long-standing debate in economics whether or not we leave the market to its own devices or we step in as a government. So the first system that we're going to have a look at is pro-free markets. So we are able to look at markets through the views of pro-free market economists who are generally going to be supporting that the market economy is the best way to set up an economy. And these pro-free market economists see the market economy as a calm and orderly place. So it seems to be quite stable and straightforward and not particularly turbulent. And they believe that the market mechanism working through incentives transmitted through the price signals achieves a better, more optimal outcome. So in setting up a pro-free market economy, we are going to limit government intervention and be relying on our price signals and other market signals such as profit levels to conduct market activity. So why do we believe this? Well, we're going to think about risk takers and risk takers are our businessmen and businesswomen who will be losing and gaining through making decisions. And therefore, we might expect them, given that they can lose via a decision they make, that they will know more than the civil servants within the government and that who have risk-free salaries and secure pensions. So our business people just within the market are going to have differences of opinion to the government as to how the market actually is. And the argument goes that because the government is pretty stabilized and will always be there short of a civil revolution that destroys the government, the business people have more information given that they are operating within operating quite intimately within the industry that they're in and they have much more risk attached to their decisions and therefore more motivated as compared to the government who if the civil servants were the ones that providing information to guide business they have relatively little information in comparison or would make incorrect decisions given that they do not operate directly within the market and have no stake within it. So moreover if we think about our economic agents and our households specifically the markets are competitive so what is produced is ultimately what the consumer wants and they know what they want as they know what is best for them so all of the goods a household is going to demand are going to be specific exactly to what the people want as opposed to anybody else dictating to economic agents and households as to what they need it's going to be those who know best the people themselves they are going to direct business into what they demand and therefore will be having an influence on what is supplied 
So if we view the market in this way, that it is a free market, then the job of the government is to quite simply maintain law and order, as any government should, set up laws and also uphold them. The government is also going to be providing public goods and merit goods where the market fails. So within a free market, we know that there is market failure through our theory. And so let's take vaccines, for example. Vaccines actually provide more benefit to the society than they do to the individual and private business is going to be more motivated behind provision to the individual as opposed to the group as a whole the community and the society and so vaccines are provide more benefit to the community than they do to the individual because then people are generally less unwell which is good for society as opposed to just purely to the individual not being unwell and so that's where the government steps in the government is also going to be able to create an environment where firms compete competitively and there is minimum interference and also minimum regulation. So the rules are relatively diminished, not to say that they don't exist, but they are held to a minimum point and where they do not exceed past the point in which we would say the market is not free anymore. So now let's think about the other side of the coin, which is interventionists. Interventionist economists believe in the opposite of the pro-free market economists, and they will believe that markets are uncompetitive. As they are uncompetitive, they are inherently bad. And this is due to the development of monopoly power and producer sovereignty and other areas of market failure which interventionists view as problematic. So let's take Apple, for example, with an example of producer sovereignty. So Apple is going to have the motto of producing what they think customers will like. So they'll be producing what they believe customers will like as opposed to directly what customers want. And the reason Apple can do this is because they are so large and they are going to make assumptions on what people like as opposed to what they actually want. Moreover, interventionist economists will think that uncertainty about the future and lack of correct market failure information are destabilizing forces. So the idea that there is an inherent uncertainty behind what our businessmen are doing is essentially leading them off the cliff and down into a not so great outcome. Now, interventionist economists believe that governments know better than unregulated market forces. So before, with pro-free markets, we argued that the market knows best because they are more closely aligned to it. Interventionists are going to believe that the market actually knows not a particular amount and the government is going to be able to make a better decision than the market would. So this is because the government can anticipate and counter the destabilizing forces and achieve better outcomes. So we have destabilizing forces such as market downturns, or there's some kind of shock to the economy, such as Brexit. And how to deal with those, the market will not know. And therefore, the government is going to know. And the output is that we have a good outcome. So there are inputs in terms of destabilizing forces to the economy. And the interventionists argue that the market economy doesn't know how to deal with those, but the government does know. And therefore, we lead to more positive outcomes relative to our free markets. Hey, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you're looking for an amazing A-level economics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level economics a walk in the park.